isang pinagpala at magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for coming to church today. As I mentioned in the past, it's about time that we go back to our normal way of giving praise and worship to God. You know, people have been used to uh, participate through Zoom live streaming. That was a temporary measure. And we hope we go back. So invite your friends, relatives, and neighbors to come to church. For when we come to church, again, we have that uh, big opportunity to receive Jesus sacramentally, not just through spiritual communion. So again, thank you. So we'll continue our reflection on the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, which we started last Thursday, and we will end on Saturday. So far, we have tackled the address, the second part, this has five parts, that is unity in the church through Jesus. In Jesus, there is unity in creation. In Jesus, there is unity among all nations. And we see this affirmed in the church. We see this manifested in the church. We experience this in the church. And so we are in the third part of this uh, short letter that runs for six chapters. But the third part is world mission of the church. So when we receive a gift, it's not meant to be kept. It's meant to be shared. So we heard in the first reading how God from the very beginning had in mind all nations to participate in his kingdom in his glory and yet God made it open it little by little he revealed it he made it open little by little so that people can perhaps better understand what it means to be chosen what it means to be loved by God this is what St. Paul tells us from his own experience, how he was converted and from a persecutor, he became a great, uh, a, uh, an important pillar of the church in proclaiming the good news. So it's not just the Israelites, the Jews that were chosen, but from the beginning, God wanted all people to be part of his family to be part of the church. So the church has a special mission to make known to the world what God has in his heart, what he has in his mind, to let people experience the power of his love, a power that can change our lives, a power that can change the world, as we see this exemplified in St. Paul. And yet, What's important is we have to be responsive every day. We have to be vigilant. As Jesus tells us in the gospel today, to be vigilant is to watch. It is to take action. It is to prepare. Not at the last minute. You know, you don't try to observe a good diet, a good lifestyle when you are sick. Sometimes it's too late, you know? And yet, how do we maintain a healthy life? By, you know, we do that by every day. We try to observe, you know, uh, see our lifestyle if it's helping us live a healthy life. That means spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. So Jesus tells us to be watchful, to be careful for all of us receive many gifts all of us receive talents and so there is the invitation to respond generously just as God has been generous to each one of us we are meant to be generous also in responding to God though he has loved us first he took the initiative in touching our lives and yet, there is that invitation to respond generously. So, my dear friends, we don't have 
we do not have to wait for the last minute. Each day, we try to live as God responsible stewards. In the parable, we heard about a master and a servant. Yet, though we use these words, master, servant, there is that filial relationship between God and us. He does not treat us as slaves. He treats us as his own children. For that, let us be grateful. Let us continue to nurture, nourish this filial relationship with a loving God who cares for us, who sustains us each day. We pray that we may always be responsible towards of the kingdom of God by being vigilant each day. Amen.